Hello, how is going? Welcome to another comparison test, but this time between Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, Sony A7 III, Canon 1DX Mark II and DJI Osmo Pocket. Is there any sense to put DJI Osmo Pocket with the bigger boys? We are about to see. It's not gonna be scientific test with every single detail, but rather a true field test in real situation from three different cinematographers. Footage from all three cameras is of course in 4K, so the setup is. Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, ProRes 422, Profiles is film style, Lens is Sigma 18-35 f1.8, Metabon Speed Booster 0.71 on Moza Air 2. Then we've got Sony A7 III S-Log 2, with Zeiss 55 f1.8 on Zion Web Bio Lab. Canon 1DX Mark II, Marvel Advanced Semi Flat Profile with 35 f1.4L on DJI Ronin S, and finally, DJI Osmo Pocket will use Sinner like day. As we know, Canon 1DX Mark II doesn't have true C-Log, I like the smaller and cheaper Bravo 5D Mark IV, shout out to Canon for that. So for this reason, I used Marvel Advanced, which is able to hold a lot of information. Yeah, I could use James Miller C-Log 3, which is very similar to Canon C-Log 3, and which I use very often, but for this purpose Marvel will be more than enough. Also, I'm not gonna do heavy color grading, so you'll get the most realistic picture from each camera and to choose which one you prefer the best, in case you're in doubt what to buy. First, let's say that I have prejudice about Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K because of its sensor size. I'm not a big fan of Micro Four Third sensors, but in this case, footage from this camera surprised me pleasantly. With Metabans Ultra 0.71, you're gonna reduce crop size to 1.4, which is close to APS-C or S35 cameras. If you've got plenty of full-frame lenses, the Metabon 6L.64, you can go even further and reduce the crop size to 1.3, which is APS-H, or the same like 1DX Mark II in 4K. Also, you're gonna get 1.3 stop in lens apertures. 5-inch screen is much bigger and more useful than the screen size we got used to on DSLR and mirrorless cameras, but brightness could be much better. One downside might be the price of this Metabons, which is $650, but even then, this camera will be 3 times cheaper than my 1DX Mark II. Also, if your priority is out of focus, this camera is not for you. Battery will last only 45 minutes, so getting a lot of them is a must. Or you can buy some external bigger battery. It's no big deal, but just to let you know. On a bright sunny day, I had a problem to see every detail on a screen, so Sunhood might be a wise decision to get with this camera. Otherwise, for this price and capabilities, I can recommend this camera like a major go. Sony A7 III, really popular and relatively cheap camera. I like the most, it's lightweight, so it can be used on a smaller and lighter gimbal like Zion Web Bio Lab. Also, there is a useful S-Log 2 and S-Log 3, which will improve dynamic range and with proper color grading, give you more cinematic picture. Where Sony shines, it's a smaller bitrate, so I'm gonna spend a fortune on SD cards unlike the Canon 1DX Mark II. Also important thing to be mentioned is that Sony A7 III is the only camera on this test which shoots in 4K in a full frame. Other focus is really close to Canon 1DX2, but Canon is still slightly better. One battery can last for a long period of time, but two batteries you are good to go for the whole day of shooting. Also there is no 50 or 60p in 4K, which is a little bit disappointing. Which goes to black magic, it's the same for Sony A7 III, the price is 3 times less than Canon 1DX2. Canon 1DX Mark II. Arguably, the best of all of them. <laughs> and it's not as if as I've got one. All jokes aside, the strongest point of this camera is well known Canon color science, and also DCI 4K in 50 or 60p. Like cinematographer, I don't think I'm gonna praise the autofocus ever, because I'm used to pull the focus manually for more than a decade. But when you're on a study cam or gimbal, autofocus is amazing things to have. And as we know, Canon Duoplex autofocus is still the best on the market today. MJPEG codec in 4K is 800 megabits per second, which makes huge files, so if this camera is your main choice, be prepared to buy plenty of really expensive CFAS 2.0 cards. But on the other side, because of robust codec, you'll be able to push the footage in post quite hard. Downside of Canon 1DX2, obviously it's a large weight, and if you're using on a stabilizer for a long period of time, your arm's gonna be fatigued. Also, it's on the threshold of the DJI Ronin S, so if you'd like to use custom quick release adapter like Manfrotto 394 on this gimbal, camera will be top heavy, and only solution is to put counterweight on the bottom, or to use other gimbal like Moser Air 2 or upcoming Zion Crane 3, which we're gonna review really soon. Price is the biggest downside, and like I mentioned before, you can buy three cameras for this one. However, I still love this camera and the quality which provides me, and I'm not even close to selling it for now.
Fuji I use my pocket, obviously not professional, but true pocket camera. It's lightweight, best for travel, manual controls, it has 3 axis gimbal, and like you saw with Cine Leica D, can produce really nice picture for such a small camera. On the downside, battery lasts only about 60 minutes in 4K 50 or 60p, and it's not exchangeable. Thanks to my colleague Mauro and Mattel to jump in and make this comparison test even more interesting. You can find the links to their channels in the description. So at the end, you should decide which camera is the best for you. We got a great time filming this test and I hope you got the same watching it. From now on, I'm gonna try to upload every single week. So stay tuned, cheers!